Welcome back. You know, we know as believers and followers of Jesus Christ that his word clearly identifies Satan as the supreme leader of rebellion and sin. He led the rebellion in heaven against God and was cast out where he has wreaked havoc on God's creation, us. You know, Satan's ultimate war is with God, and we are created in the image of God. The devil hates God and anything that represents God's goodness, his holiness, and his truth. The devil is the father of lies, and there is no truth in him. You know, we're talking about wayward children, wayward teens, young adults, but it doesn't matter. If this helps you, then it's for you. We've been answering some of the questions that parents begin to ask themselves when faced with these severe storms in parenting. Am I a bad parent? Am I doing something wrong? Is there anything I can do? Before we move forward in discussing more questions, as well as looking at some biblical examples, I want to show you one more solid principle you can apply right now along with praying and listening to God. As I said in the beginning, the devil is the enemy and his tool is deceit. He is a liar and Jesus said that the truth will set you free. Therefore we know that it's lies that bind us and hold us and our wayward child in captivity. So it's vital that our minds are focused on God's truth every day. We must win the war of the mind. If we lose that, then we'll lose hope. We will lose confidence. We will lose faith. And we will be no help to our child. When bad things happen, the pain and the emotions are severe, and we know we're in for a battle, that's when the devil will flood our minds with his lies. He will do everything he can to keep us focused on the negative, to dwell on what the what ifs and the and the wise and fill us with fears based on what might happen and into the, the unknown future until anxiety rules our hearts and our minds. We absolutely must resist him. And the good thing is when the Bible says if you resist the devil he will free from you. Of course he's going to come back. It's a war. But we must not let anxiety and fear have a stronghold in our minds. Jesus said in Matthew 6.34 Therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You know, the less time we spend reading, memorizing, and studying God's Word and filling our minds and thoughts with His truth, the more vulnerable we are to Satan's lies. And he is so deceptive and so subtle and he's relentless. How can we possibly expect to fight off lies when we don't even know the truth? Remember, the devil Cain is an angel of light. He parades himself as an angel of light. His lies may seem true, they may seem good, and yet God's word will expose them for what they really are. Their lies. He doesn't come running at us with a red suit and a pitchfork. He may use a family member, or a friend, or anyone he can use, gets in their flesh, and allows their thoughts to be controlled by him. You know, we can't control a thought from entering into our mind. But we can control whether or not we dwell on, we fantasize on, or we allow that thought to grow and accept it as true. Or we can take that thought and we can compare it in light of God's word. And if it doesn't line up with what God says, we immediately reject that thought and choose to think about what God's truth says. When we get God's truth deep down in our hearts, it will change everything. We don't have to be controlled by what is happening to us or happening to our kids. We don't have to accept that what is happening will never change. We don't have to give up and throw in the towel. And we do not have to accept what we see as just the way it is and just the way it's going to be. When things for my son had been out of control beyond what most people can probably relate to, it looked hopeless. The devil began to attack me on a daily basis with the lie that your son would never follow Jesus and that your son is going to die. The problem here was that what the devil was saying lined up exactly with what I was seeing. And so it was easy to be overcome with fear and anxiety and hopelessness. When I thought about those things, those thoughts devastated me. So I needed two things. I needed the truth and I needed faith. I began to fill my time and my mind with the Word of God. And you know the Bible says in Romans 12:3 that God has already dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. So I already had the faith I needed. And then the Lord showed me Joshua 24:15. It says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, it sure didn't look that way. I sure didn't see how that was going to happen. In fact, my son hated God at the time. But without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please God. 
Now faith is not seen or it's not really faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of the realization of things hoped for, the evidence or confidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1 1. Our attitude should be God said it, that settles it for me. No matter what I hear, no matter what I see, no matter what happens, I'm standing, thinking, meditating on, and accepting by faith what God says. So I begin to think about this verse. It's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. I begin to say it out loud when the lies would come. I wrote it on the wall in my home. I even spoke it to my son who looked at me like I was crazy. But it began to sink into my spirit and I refused to give up and I and simply accept the things that I was seeing. You know, this is just one small example of standing on God's truth in the storm. There are many other examples I have from my own uh, testimony, but I think this one will do for today. You know, God never lied. Took some time. The valley even got deeper. The storm was even stronger. But today, I don't just claim that verse by faith. I get to claim that verse by sight. Because it's for me and my house. We are serving the Lord. Praise all. Praise be to God. God bless you. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Mother's Day and have a special video for you.